Natus Medical presents Introduction to Neurocom Balance Systems. In this presentation, we will review the history of how Neurocom balance systems were developed. We'll review the market for sales opportunities. We will cover computerized dynamic posturography, also known as CDP. We'll discuss the Neurocom product line in great detail. Additionally, we'll cover educational opportunities for static and dynamic balance systems that are available for both customers and distributors. Finally, we'll cover the top five reasons to buy Neurocom. Prior to listening to this presentation, it will be most helpful to have the following resources available. Please review the Neurocom Family Product Brochure. The product configuration matrix in this brochure will be referred to several times during this presentation. Additionally, it's most helpful to have read Objective Quantification of Balance and Mobility. Neurocom Balance Solutions are known worldwide for the development of computerized tools for the assessment and rehabilitation of balance and mobility disorders. This leadership is maintained through a commitment to products with strong clinical and scientific research justification. Natus offers the best product education and business support in the industry. Let's discuss the history of Neurocom. In the 1960s, Dr. Lou Nashner developed the Equitest as part of a research grant from NASA. They were investigating the effect of space travel and zero gravity conditions on the vestibular system. In the 1980s, Dr. Nashner launched the Neurocom Equitest product line. The Equitest balance system and protocols have been extensively researched since that time. Neurocom is known for innovative force plate technology and advanced computer software. This technology is used in diverse fields such as neuroautology, orthopedics, sports medicine, physical therapy, audiology, otolaryngology, and in the athletic training market. Neurocom has a complete range of balanced solutions from simple, easy to use screeners to clinical research systems utilized by clinicians and researchers worldwide. There may be many reasons why a patient might experience difficulties with equilibrium. Center of gravity alignment is one of those reasons. In this illustration, we can see that this patient's center of gravity alignment is shifted off to the left. This is one example of a result that could be obtained with either a static or dynamic system from Neurocom. Balance control requires that an individual have both gaze stability and postural stability. We must be able to see clearly and maintain stable gaze while we are moving. We must also have good postural stability. With the Neurocom balance systems, either the static system or the dynamic system, we can objectively evaluate and quantify a patient's postural stability. We can also evaluate gaze stability with the Envision software package. This evaluates both dynamic visual acuity and gaze stabilization. Clinicians who can assess and rehabilitate these two components have the complete picture. 
balance is miraculous, complex, and interactive. Balance control requires effective use of both sensory and motor systems. On the sensory side of the chart, we utilize our vestibular, visual, and somatosensory cues that come from our environment to determine where we are in space. Additionally, we have to generate the correct body movements to maintain our postural stability. All of this information is processed by our brain automatically so that we understand where our body is in space and we make the correct movements to maintain our balance. Thus, balance control relies on the interaction of three major components the sensory systems for accurate information about our position, visual, vestibular, and somatosensory, and the motor systems for coordinating movements required to maintain balance. We must also have the ability to integrate these processes. The Neurocom Balance Solutions treat dizziness and disequilibrium that may result from unknown causes or from concussion, traumatic brain injury, perhaps orthopedic injuries, vestibular disorders, neurodegenerative diseases, dynamic vision and gaze stabilization issues, movement disorders such as Parkinson's disease. We also assist in fall reduction programs and assessing a person's fall risk and certainly injuries that may result from on-the-job accidents. It's not uncommon for a person who suffers a balance disorder to visit the physician several times in search of an answer. Studies have shown that it may take up to 52 months in search of a solution. This may include a visit to the emergency department, a psychiatric referral, numerous diagnostic tests, and numerous specialists consulted for an answer. 60% of Americans will have a balance problem during their life. Oftentimes it may be just a minor inconvenience, but in many cases it's debilitating and can lead to falls, injury, and extended lifestyle changes. Over 12 and a half million Americans over the age of 65 have a balance problem that significantly interferes with their daily life activities. Many will experience at least one fall during their lifetime, and some will experience multiple falls. A baseline balance assessment can help. Let's talk a bit about the balance product market. Sales opportunities may be available at physical therapy offices, audiologists and ENTs or otolaryngologists, certainly neurologists, and even athletic training offices. Facilities that utilize the Neurocom Balance Solutions include hospitals, universities, private clinics, researchers, and military organizations utilize these solutions, oftentimes for concussion management and traumatic brain injury, sports medicine clinics, orthopedic clinics, and senior living centers also utilize the Neurocom Balance Solution approach. An interdisciplinary team care model is ideal for treating and diagnosing patients with balance disorders. In this illustration, you can see that a patient goes to a central location such as their primary care doctor or maybe their otolaryngologist. From that point, the patient may be referred out for testing through an audiology clinic. They may then be referred to another specialist such as a neurologist or a neurootologist, or they may be referred to physical medicine with vestibular rehab. There are many benefits of a balance program to the customer. Increased business referrals. It certainly can provide a competitive advantage, generating new revenue, 
and providing objective report measurements and custom training programs. Finally, improved treatment outcomes are realized with evidence-based technology. Neurocom Balance Solutions is the number one choice for leading healthcare and research institutions worldwide. The SMART Equitest is the gold standard in balance. Let's have a look at the Neurocom Balance Manager products. Across the top of the page, we see the static balance systems from the VSR through the Balance Master, and then Envision technology. Across the bottom of the chart, we see our dynamic balance systems from the Smart Balance Master to the Smart Equitest, and then the clinical research systems. We'll discuss each of these systems in detail. First, let's review how the information is collected. Neurocom utilizes force plate technology. On the left, we'll see an 18 inch by 18 inch force plate. This is the force plate utilized for the VSR and the basic balance master. There are four load cells in this force plate located in the corners. Those load cells are force transducers that measure sway. In the center, we see an 18 inch by 30 inch force plate. This is the force plate utilized for the VSR Sport. Again, four transducers, four load cells are located in the corners of the force plate. Finally, we see the 18 inch by 60 inch force plate. This is the force plate utilized for the Balance Master. This is a longer force plate allowing for functional assessments such as walk across, tandem walk, and so on. Again, the load cells or the force transducers are located in the corners of the force plate. The dynamic system has the four load cells or force transducers in the corners, but it also has a fifth load cell. This fifth load cell in the dynamic system measures shear forces or the horizontal forces which come about when a patient utilizes hip strategy to maintain their balance. This fifth load cell is part of a smart balance master, an equitest, and a smart equitest. Additionally, the Neurocom system incorporates normative data for all of their test protocols. The normative data ranges from age 3 to age 79. Our documentation in the Clinical Interpretation Guide and the Instructions for Use offer details about the normative data sets and the ranges. The following Neurocom test protocols require clinical interpretation as opposed to direct comparison to normative data. These include the head shake SOT, dynamic visual acuity, and the gaze stabilization test. The normative data for the Neurocom balance solutions were collected on patients weighing between 40 and 300 pounds or 18 to 136 kilograms and patients between 30 and 80 inches in height or 76 to 203 centimeters. There are also physical and mechanical limits for the dynamic and the static system. The dynamic system can accommodate patients from 14 to 200 kilograms and patients whose height is less than 203 centimeters. The static system allows for evaluation of patients between 14 and 270 kilograms. How do you perform the test correctly and is it important to do so? 
it's certainly important to do the tests according to the details specified in the instructions for use in order to make direct comparisons to the normative data. This information is clearly spelled out in all of the NeuroCom documentation. Information on patient preparation, whether the patient should wear shoes, how to harness the patient, what the weight restrictions are, and so on. Patient positioning, patient instructions are detailed as well in the instructions for use. This information is also clearly present on the software during the test. How is the patient positioned for testing? The patient's feet are positioned on the force plate according to the instructions, which again are clearly present during the test. The standard foot placement lines up the medial malleolus, or the ankle bone, with the horizontal line on the force plate. The lateral calcaneus, or the edge of the heel bone, is lined up, according to the patient's height, to the S, M, or T line. For comfort, patients can splay their feet after correctly positioning the malleolus and calcaneus. As mentioned earlier, the three sensory systems necessary to help achieve good postural stability are vision, somatosensation, and vestibular. The NeuroCom system utilizes a core assessment protocol, which includes both sensory and motor testing. The EquiTest, or the Smart EquiTest, includes computerized dynamic posturography, which is made up of the sensory organization test, the motor control test, and the adaptation test, as well as a voluntary motor test known as Limits of Stability, or LOS. The core assessment for a smart balance master includes the sensory organization test, adaptation, and limits of stability. Motor control is not available on the smart balance master. The core assessment on a static system includes the modified clinical test of sensory interaction on balance, or the modified CAT-SIB, and limits of stability. Let's have a look at the NeuroCom product matrix. We will refer back to this product matrix several more times during this presentation. As an example, over to the right, we see SMART EquiTest, which, as we mentioned, is the gold standard for balance assessment. If we go down the column under SMART EquiTest, we see that it includes the sensory organization test, which also includes center of gravity alignment. Adaptation, motor control, limits of stability are also available. That is the core assessment, sensory organization test with adaptation, motor control, and limits of stability. With the SMART EquiTest, we also have several other voluntary motor tests and functional tests available, such as unilateral stance, and training exercises. Functional tests are also available utilizing the optional long force plate. The static system, or the VSR, utilizes an 18-inch force plate, and the core assessment utilizing the 18-inch force plate is known as the Modified Clinical Test of Sensory Interaction on Balance, or the Modified CAT-SIB. The Modified CAT-SIB includes four conditions eyes open and eyes closed on a stable surface, eyes open and eyes closed on an unstable surface, which in this case is a thick foam pad. The objective measures with the modified CATSIB include postural sway velocity, and this is measured by the force plate technology or the load cells in the corners of the force plate. The center of gravity position in each trial is also measured. There are three trials for each condition. The results of the test are compared to age-matched norms. This slide shows an example of a test result for a modified CATSIB utilizing the VSR Sport. The diagram on the left 
shows the pre-rehab test results. The diagram on the right shows the post-rehab test results. Simply at a glance, we can see there are red bars on the left indicating performance outside of the normal range. After therapy, all of the results are now inside of the normal range, within normal limits, designated by green bars. As mentioned previously, the gold standard in balance testing is CDP, or Computerized Dynamic Posturography. CDP consists of three tests, the sensory organization test, the motor control test, and the adaptation test. There are six conditions of the sensory organization test. The first three conditions have one thing in common, the support surface is fixed. The patient during the first three conditions is standing on firm support. On the second three conditions, the support surface is what we call sway referenced. The support surface moves as the patient sways forward and back. Let's take a look at each condition in detail. In condition one, with a fixed support, the patient's eyes are open. The patient has all three sensory systems available for balance, vision, somatosensation, and inner ear or vestibular. In condition two, vision is removed as the patient is instructed to close their eyes. Again, the support surface is fixed and the patient still has their vestibular system to rely on for balance. In condition three, the patient's eyes are open, but the surround is sway referenced. This means as the patient sways or leans forward and back, the colorful surround that they are facing also moves with them on a one-to-one -one ratio. In order to maintain good balance during this condition, the patient must disregard this inaccurate visual input and rely on their somatosensation or the feeling in their feet and ankles and their inner ear for balance. The primary sense that a normal patient will utilize in conditions one through three to maintain good balance and postural stability is somatosensation or the feeling in their feet and the position of their ankles. In condition four, the patient's eyes are open, but the support surface is now sway referenced. This means that as the patient slowly leans forward and back, the support surface moves in a one-to-one -one ratio with them. This effectively eliminates the feeling the patient may experience in their feet and ankles their ankle position does not change and there's no additional pressure or sensation in the soles of their feet as they lean forward and back. So we've eliminated the patient's ability to use somatosensation to maintain balance and postural control. They must now rely on vision and vestibular senses. In condition five, we remove vision by asking the patient to close their eyes. During this condition, the support surface is still sway referenced as it was in condition four. Now the only sense the patient has left to maintain their balance is the vestibular sense or their inner ear. In condition six, the patient's eyes are open but the surround is sway referenced. The surface is sway referenced as it was in conditions five and four. So the only sense the patient has available to utilize for good balance control and postural stability is their inner ear or their vestibular sense. What does the sensory organization test offer that the modified CAT-SIB does not? The sensory organization test provides information on a patient's effective use of their visual vestibular, and somatosensory cues. The sensory organization test helps the clinician guide their treatment plan by providing objective, quantifiable measures outlining how well a patient utilizes vestibular, visual, and somatosensory cues for balance. The modified CATSIB does not isolate impairments within these individual sensory systems. Let's take a look at the analysis sheet for a sensory organization test. At the top, we see the equilibrium score. 
you can easily see there are red and green bars on this chart. These individual trials isolate the effective use of each sensory system under each environmental condition. We described the conditions in a previous slide. As we can see in this chart, the patient's performance is within the normal range as compared to age-referenced normative data in conditions 1, 2, 3, and 4. This is designated by the presence of green bars. In conditions 5 and 6, the results show red bars. This indicates that the patient's sway was outside of the normal limits for their age range in those conditions. The composite score quickly identifies the presence of a balance control problem. In general, a composite score that is red indicates that the test is outside of the normal range. The composite score can also be useful to identify patients who are at risk for falling. The sensory analysis graph at the lower left of the screen summarizes the overall function of the three systems and the ability to resolve conflicting sensory inputs. In this case, we see that the vestibular bar is red, and this correlates well with the equilibrium scores in conditions 5 and 6. If you recall, in conditions 5 and 6, the support surface is sway referenced and the patient's eyes are closed or the visual information is conflicting with a sway referenced surround. In conditions 5 and 6, the patient is forced to utilize their vestibular system to maintain postural control and stability. In this case, it clearly shows that the patient was unable to effectively utilize vestibular cues for balance. On the lower right, we see the center of gravity alignment. This patient's center of gravity alignment is within the normal range. Another test that's part of the core assessment for the Equitest is the motor control test, or the MCT. The motor control test provides information regarding motor impairments which may underlie a balance disorder. The motor control test protocol assesses the ability of the automatic motor system to quickly and effectively recover following unexpected support surface disturbances. The latency quantifies the time between the stimulus, when the force plate moves, and the patient's active response. Prolonged latencies are strong evidence of musculoskeletal and or biomechanical problems and possible pathologies within the long loop pathways, including the peripheral nerves, the ascending and descending spinal pathways, and the brain structures. If prolonged latencies are documented by the motor control test, the patient may be a candidate for a neurological evaluation. Weight symmetry also provides information relative to distribution of weight on each leg during testing. This information is also utilized when analyzing latency responses. Amplitude scaling quantifies the strength or efficiency of responses for both legs and for the three translation sizes, small, medium, and large. The adaptation test measures the ability to minimize sway when exposed to sudden, unexpected changes in surface inclination. The adaptation test quantifies the patient's ability to systematically reduce their sway during repeated exposure to the same surface tilt disturbance. The test consists of a sequence of five randomized trials during which the platform rotates eight degrees up and eight degrees down. The results of the adaptation test are certainly helpful for patients who may be at risk for falling. We encounter surface irregularities and changes in our support surface commonly in daily life. Older adults who may be at risk for falling are excellent candidates for the adaptation test.
This is an example of an adaptation test interpretation. The shaded area on each graphic represents performance outside of the normative data range. Green squares indicate performance within the normal range. Red squares indicate performance outside the normal range. Normal individuals may or may not show increased sway responses to initial rotations of the platform. Sway responses subsequent to the first trial are typically small in normal individuals. The Limits of Stability Test, or LOS, is a test of voluntary motor. This test is available on the static and the dynamic systems, except the Equitest, which does not have the integrated monitor. The Limits of Stability Protocol quantifies impairments in ability to intentionally displace one's center of gravity without losing balance. The patient performs the task while viewing a real-time display of their center of gravity position in relation to targets placed at the center of the base of support and at the stability limits. The test measures the patient's shift in their center of gravity in eight directions, and it measures reaction time, movement velocity, movement distance, and directional control. The ability to voluntarily move our center of gravity to positions within the limits of stability is fundamental for mobility tasks such as reaching for objects, transitioning from seated to standing, and for walking. This test is particularly helpful for older adults with mobility impairments. Sometimes patients with peripheral neuropathies may experience abnormalities in reaction time directional control. Certainly patients with central nervous system pathologies, degenerative diseases such as Parkinson's or multiple sclerosis may experience problems with reaction time, directional control, movement velocity, and so on. The limits of stability test is the best available test of voluntary motor function in the Neurocom core assessment battery. Here's an example of a limits of stability test interpretation. Again, you can clearly see red bars and green bars indicating performance within the normal range or outside of the normal range as compared to age referenced norms. There are many options available for rehabilitation training and functional testing utilizing the long force plate option and the Neurocom software. Visual biofeedback enhances a patient's ability to identify and adjust their responses to environmental changes. Sequence and custom training software allows for multiple choices for the clinician to customize training protocols appropriate for their patient population. Additional resources include single sheet reports available on resourcesonbalance.com under program development, marketing your balance program, marketing downloads, you will see single sheet reports covering all of the aspects of testing and training for the Neurocom system. Let's go back to the Neurocom product matrix again. We're going to now cover some of the systems available in the Neurocom product portfolio and what options each system includes. We will discuss the static and the dynamic product configurations. The static systems are shown at the top of this chart, ranging from the VSR to the Balance Master System. Each of these systems include a static force plate. The VSR, which stands for Very Simple Rehab, is shown in this image. This is the 18-inch force plate with the 18-inch foam pad and a laptop computer. With the VSR system, clinicians can complete the Modified Clinical Test of Sensory Interaction on Balance, or the Modified CATSIB, 
the limits of stability test, weight bearing training, and custom training. The system is portable, easy to use, and is an ideal entry level system. If we refer to the Neurocom product matrix, at the top we see VSR. If we move down that column on this product matrix, we can see what tests and what protocols are available with the VSR system. The modified CATSIB, center of gravity alignment, limits of stability, and weight bearing and mobility training and custom training. The VSR Sport also utilizes a laptop computer, but this force plate is longer. This is a 30 inch force plate with a different type of foam pad called an Airx pad. With the VSR Sport, the clinician can evaluate patients using the stability evaluation test or the set test, which was designed specifically for the higher functioning athletic population. Clinicians can also utilize the VSR Sport and the modified clinical test of sensory interaction on balance or the modified CATSIB. Limits of stability, weight bearing squat, sequence training, weight bearing training, and custom training protocols are also available on the VSR Sport. This system includes a carrying bag for the laptop and for the force plate, making the system lightweight and portable to travel to athletic fields, gymnasiums, school athletic programs, and so on for baseline concussion testing. Again, referring back to the product matrix, if we go down the column under VSR Sport, we see what's available with that system. The modified CATSIB, center of gravity alignment, limits of stability, weight bearing squat, the set test, and rehab, seated balance training, weight bearing and mobility training, and custom training. The VSR Sport is a very popular system for concussion management in the United States. Here is a testimonial from a physician who manages patients with sports-related concussions. Moving on to the Basic Balance Master, this also utilizes the 18-inch force plate. With a Basic Balance Master, a clinician can complete the modified CATSIB, limits of stability, rhythmic weight shift, weight bearing squat, unilateral stance, also sequence training, weight bearing training, and custom training. The clinician can add the Envision software package to assess dynamic visual acuity and gaze stabilization for increased functionality. Again, referring to the Neurocom product matrix under the Basic Balance Master, we can easily see what options are available. The Balance Master utilizes the Long Force Plate system. This is a 60 inch force plate, which allows for functional assessments, including sit to stand, walk across, tandem walk, step quick turn, step up and over, and forward lunge. The stability evaluation test can be added to the Balance Master system. Looking again at the Neurocom product matrix under Balance Master, we see the many options available with this system. Moving on to the dynamic systems, the Smart Balance Master allows for testing utilizing the core assessment of the sensory organization test, the SOT, adaptation, and limits of stability also available with the Smart Balance Master is a rhythmic weight shift, weight bearing squat, 
unilateral stance, and sequence weight-bearing and custom training protocols. Adding a long force plate to the Smart Balance Master certainly increases its functionality by allowing for all of the functional tests. Adding Envision software allows for the Headshake SOT protocol and gaze stabilization and dynamic visual acuity. The gold standard is the Smart Equitest. The Smart Equitest has the full core assessment, computerized dynamic posturography, which consists of the sensory organization test, the motor control test, and adaptation. Also available would be limits of stability, or the LOS, a test of voluntary motor function. With the Smart Equitest, sequence training is available, custom training is available, as well as weight bearing training. Adding a long force plate to a Smart Equitest would also allow the clinician to utilize all of the functional tests, such as sit to stand, walk across, tandem walk, forward lunge, step quick turn, and so on. The Smart Equitest includes that integrated monitor to allow for the biofeedback during rehabilitation exercises. You can also consider adding the data software toolkit for greater flexibility and control of test protocols for research facilities. The Equitest configuration, as opposed to the Smart Equitest, there is no embedded monitor and no rehabilitation training software available. Thus, the Smart Equitest is the most widely popular configuration purchased worldwide. Off to the right, at the top, we see Equitest and Smart Equitest. Under Smart Equitest, we see that we have Sensory Organization Test, Center of Gravity, of course, and we have the Adaptation Motor Control Tests, Limits of Stability, Rhythmic Weight Shift, Weight Bearing Squat, Unilateral Stance, and all of the Rehab Protocols, Seated Balance Training, Weight Bearing, and Custom Training. Adding the Long Force Plate would add the Functional Assessments as well. The Equitest is very similar to the Smart Equitest with the exception of Limits of Stability and Rhythmic Weight Shift which require the use of the integrated monitor. Additionally, the Equitest does not include any of the training protocols because those two require patient feedback utilizing the integrated monitor. Customers are very happy with their purchase of the Smart Balance Master and the Equitest system as seen in these two testimonials, one from a retirement center and one from a rehabilitation institute. As mentioned, adding on the long force plate to a dynamic system increases the flexibility of that system for the clinician. The long force plate includes the prep kit and the step kit with blocks to provide endless options for the clinician to use their creativity, creating custom training exercises for their patients. Adding Envision software is also an option on all Neurocom systems. The Envision software allows for assessment of perception time, dynamic visual acuity, gaze stabilization, as well as head shake SOT for dynamic systems only. Dynamic visual acuity measures how well a person can see while their head is moving. This is an indication of the function of the VOR, or the vestibulo-ocular reflex. Gaze stabilization testing analyzes how quickly a patient can move their head and still see clearly. Utilizing the head tracker, a clinician who has a dynamic system 
can also measure head shake SOT. This increases the sensitivity of the SOT evaluation for patients who are higher functioning, yet still may have issues with their vestibular system. The data software package is available for researchers who wish to make changes in the data collection and test parameters of their Neurocom system. This also allows for easy data export for offline analysis in a research facility. Some of the modifications the researcher can make with the data software package include the duration of the trials, the targets, sway reference values, and so on. The data software package does not allow for changes to the Envision software. Another software option that is very popular is the NeuroGames software option. This provides a fun and motivating way to enhance rehabilitation training for balance and mobility. The NeuroGames package includes five computerized games that patients play by shifting their center of gravity to control the game pieces. Neurocom Clinical Education. Clinical training is offered for both the static and the dynamic systems. Static system clinical training or education on demand is available upon request by emailing ncmadmin at natus.com. Clinical training for customers of dynamic systems is available at the Clinical Integration Seminar, or the CIS, which is a two-day meeting. This meeting is available in the U.S. and globally. A registration form must be completed to secure a spot in the CIS training. As mentioned, Education on Demand is available for users of static systems. The agenda for the Clinical Integration Seminar, or the CIS meeting, includes the principles of balance, case studies, the core assessments, including sensory organization test, motor control, adaptation, and limits of stability with a smart Equitest system. Attendees are offered hands-on practice with the smart Equitest system. Sequence and custom training protocols are included as well as the functional tests with the long force plate. There is also opportunity to learn more about Headshake SOT and the Envision software package, dynamic visual acuity and gaze stabilization. Please note, the clinical integration seminar does not cover the research module. Free balance e-seminars are also offered on the Natus website. Natus is known as the Education Center for Clinical Knowledge. For a list of Balance e-seminars which are currently available and for information on the upcoming live e-seminars, please visit www.natus.com and click on the Nerve Center. Websites to know for Natus Medical and Neurocom Balance Solutions. The main balance website is www.onbalance.com. Clinicians can access resourcesonbalance.com. Patients wanting to learn more information on balance and equilibrium disorders can visit www.balanceandmobility.com. For information specific to concussion management and the VSR sport, please visit www.playasmartergame.com. And again, the on-demand training for the static system is available at the Neurocom e-Institute, www.neurocomeinstitute.com. One reason to visit resourcesonbalance.com is to locate published literature and references specific to a topic related to balance. 
simply type in a keyword and choose search. This will search the Neurocom bibliography and references will be offered covering the topic of choice. Also on resourcesonbalance.com, customers and distributors can locate images, posters, PowerPoint presentations, and so on. Even sample press releases are offered. This is a great opportunity for enhancing your marketing program. Resources available on the partner site, partner.natus.com, include the Getting Started Lab and the instructions for use for the balance systems, as well as the Clinical Operations Guide and the Clinical Interpretation Guide. The Clinical Interpretation Guide offers a wealth of information on each of the protocols with the dynamic and the static system. The objectives stated at the beginning of this presentation have now been covered, understanding the history of Neurocom, a market overview, reviewing computerized dynamic posturography, the core assessment, CDP, reviewing the entire Neurocom product line, and educational opportunities for static and dynamic balance systems available to both customers and distributors. Now let's review the top five reasons to buy Neurocom. Number one, Neurocom is the most researched balance technology. Valid, specific, and reliable data. Neurocom is the only company offering postural and gaze stability testing, Envision software, dynamic visual acuity, gaze stabilization. This is patent protected and not available on any other system. Our customers are our focus and we pride ourselves on service excellence. We are the leaders in balance education with our clinical integration seminar and online e-seminars. Over 30 years ago, Neurocom developed computerized dynamic posturography and Neurocom remains the market leader in balance. Neurocom stands alone. Differentiate yourself with Neurocom technology. Neurocom gives clinicians a competitive edge. Thank you. Please enjoy this brief informational video, which includes a demonstration of computerized dynamic posturography. Keeping our balance. It's something we all take for granted until we don't have it. Suddenly, life can change dramatically. About one out of six people will experience a balance problem in their lifetime, whether caused by disease, an accident, a part of aging, or for no apparent reason. When you have a balance problem, all your normal daily activities become difficult. So just getting up and walking across the room, getting in and out of bed, uh, getting in and out of the bathroom, uh, managing your daily affairs, going to work, driving your car, um, walking your dog, all of those things, up and down your stairs, all of those things become a challenge when you have a balance problem. Four years ago, Shirley, an active woman and talented artist, fell hit her head and began experiencing severe, unexplained dizziness, nausea, and motion intolerance. She couldn't enjoy many of her previous activities, and at times could barely function. Like many balance patients, she literally spent years searching for a diagnosis and treatment. And it's hard for me to say this, but it literally took four years of a life that was on the wane anyway. That's how I feel about it. After many years, Shirley finally got the help she needed, thanks to a physical therapist trained in balance assessment and the use of state-of-the-art balance equipment developed by Neurocom. The Neurocom technology allows me to objectify a balance problem, objectify the severity of it, figure out exactly where the problem is, and then treat it very specifically. I, I, I want people to know that this kind of equipment is available, that this kind of, of whole process 
is available. And it's not just relying on what is generally done, giving you a drug. If we could address the balance problem on the front end, we would save a lot of time, a lot of health care dollars, and a lot of frustration. Since her assessment and training, Shirley has seen tremendous improvement in her health and in her ability to participate in everyday activities. People with a balance problem don't need to struggle for years. There is help available, and it could be as close as your community hospital. Um, you know that it was life-saving. It was literally life-saving. testing a 55-year-old woman on the Neurocom Smart Echo Test. We're going to be performing three tests of balance and stability called computerized dynamic posturography that includes the sensory organization test, the motor control test, and the adaptation test. So we put a harness on um, Mary here, and she's going to be um, strapped into the uh, system to prevent fall. Okay? So come on up here. Climb on up. Once we have her strapped in, we'd like to see that the carabiner, this metal ring, is sitting about at the level of her shoulder. So the strap is um, taut, but it's not so tight that it's going to catch her when she um, is just swaying back and forth. Okay? All right. Now we need to position her feet. So, Mary, what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you put this ankle bone here on that wide black line there. Good. And this one, too. All the way up on the black line. Good. Stay right there for me for a second. We're going to do the tests that she's going to perform today on this menu from the main menu. I'm choosing dynamic conditions, choosing assessment, which is going to bring me into my test menu. All right. And of the assessments available in my dynamic system, I'm going to choose sensory organization test, the motor control test, and the adaptation test in that order. All right. Click on continue. Now it's going to, the system is going to tell me exactly where I need to have my patient's feet positioned on the fourth plate. She needs to have her medial malleolus in the center, aligned with the center line and the lateral part of the heel, the calcaneus bone, to the M line for her height, medium height. So I've got her so that her lateral part of her calcaneus is about at the M line and the medial part of her heel is at that wide black line. All right? forward just a little bit for me here? Good. So, Mary, we're going to um, be performing a test that has six conditions. I'm going to let you turn this on for just a second and show her what the test is all about. Um, you're going to have six conditions in this system. Um, you get three little tests of each condition. Sometimes I'll have your eyes open. Sometimes I'll have you close your eyes. On some of the conditions, the walls are going to move. And on some of the conditions, the floor is going to move. So I'm going to tell you what's going to happen every step of the way. Um, but you don't get any feedback from this. I'm going to have you turn this off. Okay? Each test is 20 seconds long. During that 20-second test, you get to stand as steady as possible. No fidgeting, no nothing. Okay? In between the tests, you can move a little bit. So here we go. The first test is very easy. You're going to stand quietly with your eyes open. Now, I've got her set back. I'm going to check her feet because um, the center of gravity alignment is slightly off. So I'm going to come back and check her feet. Scoop forward just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And same thing here. Yeah, I can just play. Great. And move this heel out a little. Great. All right. And she can splay her feet a little bit for comfort. All right. Stand in the Straight arms relaxed. That you don't have to worry about vision right now. You're going to keep your eyes open and testing. So stand really steady for 20 seconds. So on this condition, she's standing quietly with her eyes open. So she's got all three sensory systems available for balance. She's got vision available, somatosensory information from her feet, and stable information from her inner ear. Okay, that's one. You're next. 
Okay, and then we're going to do two more just like that. Ready? And testing. So we anticipate that somebody standing in this type of sensory condition where all their systems are available for balance, their nervous system would automatically default to using somatosensory information in the teaching angle. Okay, that's three. And I get feedback right away, but the client cannot see that. One more time, just like that. Testing now. eyes closed. So I'm going to tell you when to close your eyes and when it's okay to open them. You keep your eyes closed the whole time. Ready? Close your eyes and testing. Okay, so now she's standing on a firm surface with her eyes closed. So we've eliminated vision. She still has the feeling in her feet and ankles to use for postural control and balance. And she still has the inner ear function for balance. Open. Okay, get ready. We're going to do it two more times. Close your eyes and test it. All right, now normally in this condition, we expect that people will default, their nervous system will automatically use the feeling in the foot and ankle for balance. And then vestibular comes in second. So it's expected there's a slight, slight bit more of sway, but not very much because somatosensory is still the primary system. Open. All right, doing good. One more time. Close your eyes and test it. Very good. Open. All right, now you get to keep your eyes open this time the walls might be moving, all right? So your job is to stay steady even if the walls are moving. Get ready, eyes are open, stand steady, starting now. <coughs> there is a strap on the back of the harness here. There's a handle in case the person starts to lose their balance. I can assist in some way um, or touch them in case they're falling. Nice. You okay? All right. Get two more just like that. Get ready and test it. The other thing we look at here under these conditions where the floor is not moving, that's step two. Get ready. Get one more. Testing now. Because we want to see that because she's not challenged a lot with her balance, that she'd be swaying, making little adjustments with balance over her ankles, not using a lot of excessive movement to maintain her balance. That's, that would be normal in this case. Good. You all right? Looking good. All right. You get to keep your eyes open now, but this time the floor might move underneath you. All right, so your job is to stay steady even when the floor is moving. Get ready and test it. All right, so we're looking for her ability to stand steady even without accurate information from her feet and ankles. Step one, you okay? All right, same thing again, starting now. So if we disadvantage the floor by making it a little bit unsteady, she has her eyes open and her inner ear is still functional, it's, there's no pathology, she should be able to use vision very strongly for balance. Um, and then secondary system would be vestibular. Very good. You're looking good. You got one more just like that. Testing now. All right. And then we don't typically tell.
tell the client how the floor is moving or how the walls are moving, but when she sways, that's what causes the floor to sway. So it's actually going to move with her um, when she's swaying so she doesn't get any feedback from the visual system or the ankle, mat of sensory in the ankle. All right, we have two more tests in this um, machine here on this particular one. The next one, you're going to have your eyes closed and the floor is going to move underneath you, all right? <coughs> Excuse me. So you um, keep your eyes closed the whole time. If you have to open them for any reason, you let me know because I need to stop the test. Ready? Close your eyes and test it. Now what we've done is we've disadvantaged the somatosensory system by moving the floor, eliminated vision by closing the eyes, and the only reliable balance the sensory system for balance and postural control right now is her vestibular system. So she has to rely on that to know what upright is. Open. So we do expect a little bit more sway on this one. That's normal. All right. Same thing again. Close your eyes and test it. Open. All right, get ready, close your eyes, and touch. One more just like that. Okay, this is actually doing very, very well on this test. The gray area you see, you might see over here on the computer, means the abnormal range. She's way up above that abnormal range. The green lines represent good performance. And open. Looking good. All right. The last can test on this one, last condition. Um, you keep your eyes open, but this time the walls and the floor both might move. So your job is to stay steady when things are moving around you. Get ready. And testing now. So you can see that as she sways, the walls and the floor will sway with her, which makes visual information and somatosensory information from the floor unreliable for balance. So again, the inner ear or the vestibular apparatus is the only accurate sensor she's getting. Nice. Okay, get your bearing. Take a breath. And get ready. We got two more just like that. Testing now. Get one more just like that. Get ready and test it. Now she's doing very, very well when the walls are moving. There's a lot of people that get tested in this system that don't do well. They trust vision so much that they sway with the walls. They don't realize that the walls are moving around them. So they're going to lose the balance or fall during those conditions. So this one really focuses on the vestibular system as well. All right. You can relax and breathe for just a second. And I'll focus on this for just a minute. We'll take a brief look at the results. Um, we have a composite score, which is an average score of all six trials, all three conditions of each trial. She's well within the normative range. Her, her stability bar is green, and it's all very close to the 100% stability up here as far as her equilibrium score. So this is a very, very good test. This um, score that we got is um, based on normative data for people of her same height. We're going to move on to the motor control test. All right, Mary, for this test, you're going to stand steady on the platform, but this time the platform is going to move like this. It's going to go backwards or forwards very quickly, kind of like someone's pulling a rug out from under you. First, it's going to go a little, small one, then medium, and then big one, and you get three of each. Okay, your job, again, stand steady and um, try to stay as quiet as possible. Don't let it knock you over at all. Okay? So the first ones are going to...
going to go backwards, but very, very small, starting now. Okay, you get two more just like that. Good. All right, now we're going to do medium ones backwards, starting now. So the fourth place is sliding, and that's causing a reaction. She has to react to that to keep her balance. And since we know how fast information moves in the nervous system, we can actually measure the latency of her response. So how much time it takes her body to respond to this surface pursuit. All right, now the big ones. You ready? Starting now. Okay. So the small ones are barely at threshold. The larger ones are saturating for the nervous system. So we should get a nice, strong response. And she's doing quite well on this test. All right, now we're going to do the exact same thing, but the floor is going to move forward. Three times small, medium, and large. Small ones starting now. People that might not do well on this test would be people with um, unilateral peripheral problems that are orthopedic, people with back pain, some people with neurologic pathology. Medium ones starting now. Um, central nervous system dysfunction where the person doesn't have adequate ability to get information, sensory motor information in and out of the nervous system. Good. All right, big ones forward. Testing now. Good. And the reaction she's getting is very normal. You want to see a nice strong reaction from the client that you're testing. All right, relax for a second. We're done with that one. Okay, Mary, the last test we're doing on here is called the adaptation test. On this test, the floor plate's going to rotate. It's going to do this. Toes are going to go up really, really fast. It's going to go five times in a row, and each one is exactly the same. All right, so your job is to stand steady, as um, steady as possible through all of those perturbations. Once it gets started, it just keeps going. Okay, I don't stop the test. You try to do all five. Get ready. Toes are coming up quickly, starting now. Okay, so on this test, the platform is going to rotate eight degrees up at a known speed, so we can cause a, up, a toes up perturbation for the client. And what we're looking for here is if we repeat the same stimulus five times in a row, how does she do? How does her um, nervous system adapt to that stimulus? Does she, is she able to do it? Um, is she able to um, get better and better at it and have a smaller and smaller reaction? And that's what we would expect from people who get used to the same stimulus over and over. Nice job. All right, now we're going to do the same thing, but this time your toes are going to go down, all right? Do your job again, stand steady, don't let it knock you forward. Here we go, testing now. 